Good morning, everyone. My name is Kyle. I am the naturalist here at the Marine Education Center in Harbor Island Park. Um, and we are here in the Marine Education Center. You see my touch tank behind me. So I am open from 9 until 4 so you guys can come down and visit. But today we're going to do Marine Mondays on Tuesday. And today we're going to be talking about food chains. And if I ask questions as I go, you guys can answer at home with your friends or family, or you can write it in. Sometimes the comments come in a little slow. So again, today we're going to be talking about food chains. And if you guys at home have a piece of paper in front of you, you can make a food chain as we go and as we talk. So a big question of, that I get a lot, especially with this guy when I show him, does everyone remember what this is? So whenever I show this guy, and they move very slowly, but you can see he's moving. He's about to curl over my, my hand. So they move very slowly and they don't seem like much. A lot of people think that they, they're dead when I bring them out, but they are, they're alive. So this is my sea star and we've talked about him a lot in the last couple weeks months now. Um, this is my sea star and they don't look like much, but I like to bring them out when I'm talking about food chains because everything in the marine ecosystem, which is the water out here, we're, we're dealing with the Long Island Sound ecosystem. And again, the Long Island Sound is brackish water. And if at home you know what brackish water is, you could say that out loud. Let's see if anybody remembers. So brackish water is salt and fresh water. So we have a lot of different animals here. But everything in the marine environment here is connected through the food chain. So I bring him out because he doesn't seem like much, but something relies on him for food. So that's how everything is connected in the marine world. I always get that question, well, what's its purpose? So everything has a purpose and it's mostly through the food chain. And we're gonna talk a little bit about it. And again, I do programs down here where you guys can come and check out these animals and learn some more. So everything's connected through the food chain. The bigger of the food chain is the food web. So if you look, I'm gonna bring you over to my board here, flip you around. So this is my, my attempt at a food chain. So you guys can do one as well. So a food chain is one animal, and right here I have at the top of my food chain, the shark, and then all the way to the bottom. But every animal has its own food chain. So today I'm talking about a shark, but this seal here has its own food chain. The, and the top predator there, that level four, is called apex, which is a cool word, apex predator. Does anyone at home know what an apex or can guess what an apex predator is? And you could write it in or, or say it with your friends and family. So take a good guess, or if you know, say it. So apex is that top predator. Very, very important to the food chain. Our shark is one of them. But the most important, and a lot of people forget about these, are these little tiny guys at the bottom. And they don't look like much, but these are plankton. And right here, level one is phytoplankton. Can anyone tell me what plankton is? Let's see if anyone remembers what plankton or even, even more hard question, phytoplankton is. So phytoplankton or plankton are tiny, tiny plants and animals. So you have zooplankton and phytoplankton, and our phytoplankton are at the bottom of the food web. They're tiny, tiny, and you could use these things on my, if you see on my table. These are what, if you come down soon, you'll be able to look and see the phytoplankton. So you need one of those, the microscope, to see the phytoplankton. But they're at the bottom of our food web. And can anyone at home tell me where we get our oxygen from? Let's see, who could tell me where we get, how we breathe, where do we get that oxygen from? I'll give you a second to answer. So, 
oxygen comes from trees, but actually over 50%, a lot of the oxygen comes from these little guys, phytoplankton in the ocean. So they're very important to us, but they're also very important to the food chain. They start out at the bottom here. And then what eats those are these, also very, very tiny. And those are our zooplankton. So you have our phyto and our zooplankton. So that's our level two. And then level three of our food chain are the little fish. So if you guys have come down here, or if you remember last week, we did the seining and we got all those little fish. So we could pretend those are them. And those are our mummy chugs or our killifish, bunker, which you'll see outside the center now. There's large schools of them. And then our level four are these guys. But in my food chain, I made the shark the top and he eats the seal. So you got your apex at the top, your seal, and then the seal eats the fish, the fish eats the zooplankton, and the zooplankton eats the phytoplankton. So again, every animal has its own little unique food web. So that's how everything in the marine world is pretty much interconnected, like our sea star. Does anyone at home remember what our sea star eats? So our sea star eats clams or mussels, and those clams and mussels eat the plankton in the water. So at home, if you want to do your own food web and send me a picture of it, I would love that. You could use any animal. So again, the food web is how everything in the marine world is interconnected. And at the top of that food web is us, the humans. We're pretty much at the top of every food chain. So it's very important to us and to the animals in every food chain and throughout the food web to take care of these animals. So we have a very big important role so we don't want to overfish and we don't want to pollute the water. Can anyone at home tell me one, one thing that pollutes the water and what you could do to stop it? And you could add this to your picture when you send it to me. One thing you could do to protect the fish in our food web. So since we're at the top, we're very important because we have a obligation to help these animals and not overfish them and not pollute. Because if you take one fish out of this food web or food chain, say we didn't have this, what's our seal gonna eat? So if you don't have the little fish, then the little fish eat these zooplankton. So say the little fish are gone, then the zooplankton get too big, too many. There's too many. And then there's nothing for the seal to eat or it will start eating something else and it just throws a chink in the chain. So it's very important for us to take care of this food chain. So I'm gonna bring you over here again to my... So if you look in here, these are those little fish we saw last week. So those little fish get a little bigger, but a lot of things like to eat them, so they're very important. Oops, hold on. They're very important to our, our food chain, and removing one of those animals really hurts the whole web. So at home, if you want to send a picture of your food chain, and if you see in the back here, let's see, you guys see? You can make him part of your food chain. Does everyone remember what this is? So he's important to the Long Island Sound, very important. That's our horseshoe crab. This is Buddy. He's been with me a while. Let's take a look underneath. And then if you want to make this guy part of your food web, anyone know what that is? That's our eel. So everything in the center here is from the Long Island Sound. So when you make your food web like mine, starts out with that apex predator or top predator, the shark. But this guy has its own food web as well. He likes to eat a lot of things. So you can pick an animal and do your food web because everything in our marine environment 
is very much linked to the food chain as well as we are. So next week we'll be talking more about the Long Island Sound, but send me your pictures. You can send them to my Facebook page or send them to the Westchester Children's Museum Facebook page and I will post them up. And let me know what you think one of those pollutants that might affect the food chain is. And the, the one that I'm picking is a fertilizer. And the fertilizer is what you find on grass that helps it grow, but it's, it's uh, very bad for the phytoplankton and a lot of the seaweeds down here makes them grow too fast. So that's one thing that causes a little chink in our food chain. So thank you guys for joining and hopefully I will see you all soon down at the center. You can join my programs. You can check my website for the programs each week. And um, next week I'll be here on Marine Mondays, but on Monday. Uh, talk to you guys soon. Thank you very much. Bye.